So what is a central angle? Isaiah. So that's the mathy version of it, which is fine. Um, just in case we don't all understand what the mathy version is, like what the book says. Just a, an angle in a circle that comes out of the center of the circle. That is a central angle. The vertex is the corner of it, but the angle comes out of the very center of the circle. So that's the angle coming from the center of the circle. Today, today we move into another kind of angle. We haven't done anything else except for central angles. Even in all the other stuff we did, it all revolved around angles that start right there in the center of the circle. But we'll move into something different today, and then there are different rules that go along with that. And that's why it starts to get a little challenging because it's going to be easy to get things confused when we start learning all these different types of angles. Um, so this is more EOC review. We'll do a lot with similar triangles. I have a feeling similar triangles and circles will be a big part of your EOC, which is my guess. I have no idea. Um, what are the three ways? We have two triangles. They look like they could be pretty much the same triangle. Just one enlarged or one's um, reduced, depending on which way you look at it. Oh, I'm brilliant. So what does that mean when we say side, side, side? Side, side, side is one of them. What does that mean? Because we also did side, side, side when two triangles were congruent. It means different things. It means, obviously, the triangles are not congruent. And I still had people all the way to the end confused with them. In congruent triangles, so if you have two triangles that look like they're the exact same size, yes. Congruence means these sides are the same length. So we could put Mark showing they're all the same length. I mean, just look at similar triangles, though. These are not congruent. One's bigger than the other. You can't have sides that are congruent if one shape is bigger than the other. A lot of people made that mistake in some way, either on solving, they, they might set two things equal to each other that are the length of sides. Well, the length of the sides aren't the same. They're different size triangles. So the next thing, and again, oh, so what that means is the scale factor, we said it's like the proportion between the sides. So if this is one, 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 and this is a three, and, and let's say I tell you those are similar, well, then that means if this scale factor is times three, then they all have to be times three. That's what scale factor or proportions or whatever you want to think of that means. We're, we're enlarging it by multiplying times the same number or reducing it by multiplying times, which would be a fraction if it's reducing. Uh, we'll do more with that. Hopefully, we'll have some time right at the end to really do something with that, a whole lesson. But I think that's going to be a big part of your EOC. And your EOC is a bigger percentage of your semester grade this time. It's 30 percent, not 27 and a half. So. Uh, all right. Oh, angle, angle. So again, I didn't mean to erase that. So if all of the angles of a triangle, and, and it's technically called angle, angle, but we said if we know two angles are the same, because triangles have to add up what? The internal interior angle. 180, right? So if two of the three are the same, then the third one has to be the same because they it has to be the same number to add up the 180. You can do the math on it. We did the math before. Um, that's not a great likeness of triangles. But if we know those angles are the same, again, that doesn't make them congruent triangles. It makes them similar. What is the dilation of the angle? Hey, yeah. This point. Uh, what are you at? All right, so still, although we're not that far in, but okay. look at it. But that's, did you see what number you were at? Like how many targets? Or did you just get the same? Okay, you saw it. So, again, if the angles are all the same, they are similar, not congruent. Okay. And then what was the third one? What did that mean? 
again, we have sides, but what does that mean with sides when we're talking about? What's it mean with sides when we're talking about similarity? Ah, what's it mean? No. Is that side congruent to that side? So again, in similarity, sides are never congruent. Never. Like just never. They're not the same triangle. If the sides are not the same size, the sides can't be congruent. The angles are congruent. It's the same thing we just talked about here. Those are the same scale factor. These are the same scale factor. In similar, like write it down. You got to write it down. Similar triangles, the sides are never congruent. They're different triangles. Exactly. They're not, if they were congruent, we call them congruent triangles. So similar triangles, the S's are the same scale factor, same proportion. If it were the exact same triangle, because there was also a side angle side and congruent triangles, if the triangles look exactly the same, that's when the sides are congruent. I mean, just look at the picture. There's going to be a picture at all. If they look like they're exactly the same, that's when you use congruence for the side. If they don't look the exact same, that side can't be the same as that side. The different sizes, like they're clearly a different length. Uh, the angles are still the same. Angles, again, just like when we did angle angle, the angles are congruent. So angles are always congruent, whether it's congruent triangles or whether it's similar triangles. Sides, though, however, when you go to similar, means that they're not they're not the same. They're similar to each other. Similar means proportions. Uh, again, hopefully we get time to do a little bit more on that because I think that's going to be a big part of your EOC. Maybe not. But. Huh. Next question. All right, so page 215. Here's where we start some new stuff. So here's first definition. We have something called an inscribed angle. So we had a central angle. Pretty easy to remember what a central angle was. I like start in the center of the circle. Inscribed, though, bless you really are like, I don't even know if in the depth of English, just the word definition of inscribed would help you with this. An inscribed angle, the vertex is on the circle. So they've got a picture of you or of it here. You see the angle they're talking about would be that angle right there. That is an inscribed angle. The vertex is on the circle. And then the sides of the angle continue out. And the ends of those line segments are on the circle also. So that angle. What we call that QRS. Remember, we name an angle with three letters. We name an angle with three letters. So we could have also called it SRQ as long as R is in the middle. We're fine on the naming. R has to be, if R is the vertex of the angle, it has to be the middle letter. So there are. Oh, uh, they give you these three cases. I'm not super concerned about them. I don't see how this is going to come into play. We're not going to spend much time on it. Um, they're just saying, hey, when we create an angle, it might be that the center of the circle is inside the angle. Again, there is the angle and the center is inside of it. When we create an angle, we might have one line that goes through the center. Or we might create an inscribed angle. And it, it's the, the center of the circle is outside that. I don't know why they're even going over that. Because this next theorem is true for all of them. I don't know why they're breaking out those cases. It's nothing different between the three. There's no not even a name for them, so I don't know what they're doing with that. Uh, here's the main thing, though. You see the green arc. So this should be color-coded in your books. 
you see that green arc that is formed by the endpoints of the end. In an inscribed angle, that arc, because remember, there's a relationship between the degrees and the angle and the degrees and the arc. We measure them both in degrees. In a central angle, they were the same. In an inscribed angle, the arc is twice the angle. Um, so they've written it with, well, they've written it both ways, I guess. They did write it. So again, the arc is twice the angle, or the angle is half the degrees of the arc. Memorize that. Yeah. I don't know that there's an intuitive way to say, oh, yeah, well, I can figure that out. Um, I think that's one you just have to memorize. Yeah, I can't think of anything that would allow you to. Like a central angle kind of makes sense because you can keep opening that up and eventually the angle would be 360 and eventually you would cover the whole circle. Like every time you open the angle up, it's always going to match what the, the arc on the circle looks like. For this one, there's really not. I mean, there's one thing that we'll do later that will help you maybe remember it, but it's you kind of got to remember that one. Um, so again, this is not even necessary if you understand this. I would focus on memorizing that. Look at this picture though, and I'll explain what they're saying. They've got two angles, right? Two inscribed angles. They've got the orange angle and the green angle. Well, anytime you have an inscribed angle, it's going to form an arc, right? So that arc right there, AD. What it's saying is that the angle, the inscribed angles are the same measure. Then the arc has to be the same measure. It, and I think it's actually, it says if they intersect the same arc, so again, arc DA is the same for both angles. It doesn't really matter. Like that's, 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 in my opinion, that's dumb. We don't need that. What, what did I just tell you up here? What's true up here? Adam, what's true up there? If I know the angle, I, I know the measure of angle one. I'll give you a number. 50. What's the arc in degrees? Twice, right? It'll be twice that. So does it matter what they intersect down here? If I know these two are the same, the arcs are the same, what am I going to do to both of them to get the measure of, I'm sorry, the angle is the same. What am I going to do to both of them to get their arc? I'm going to multiply by two, so I'm going to get the same number. I don't care if it intersects the same arc or not. It doesn't matter. If I have the same angle and I multiply both of them by two, I'm going to get the same arc. Doesn't matter where it intersects this, like, doesn't matter if it's the exact same arc for both of them or not. If you start with the same angles, two different angles, inscribed angles, you're going to have the same arcs because you're just multiplying both of them by two to get the arc. So I think that's kind of a dumb theorem. Um, if you under if you understand this theorem, um, but for some reason they think that it's worth, again, maybe somebody wanted to put their name on a theorem, I don't know. So just remember this first one. If I have, now the pictures can get a little confusing. You will see some pretty confusing in this, or pictures in the figures. That's a part of the challenge of this moving through circles is the picture starting to get confusing. You, we haven't even gotten to solve it. This is just a theorem right now. Again, theorem, remember, a theorem is something that is true, been proven true. So we can just accept it as true. Uh, we're not doing anything to prove them anymore. Um, but like I said, if you just understand the arc is all an inscribed angle is half the arc or the arc is twice the inscribed angle. You just make sure you hammer that home. Kind of like if you just made sure you hammered home, a central angle is the same measure as its arc. This is really all you're going to need for 90 95 percent of the problems and there'll be other problems that'll look more complex but it all boils down to that uh all right that was it for that one go ahead now and do 
Example one in the check for sure. We'll we'll do that first. I'll give you. I don't, it's a little trickier as far as the figure goes. Like I said, you can get to, but the concept is always the same. Figure out what the and the inscribed angle is, and then, or sometimes they might do. They give you the arc, and they always give you the angle. Yeah, they do actually give you an arc here. So it's a little trickier than I thought, maybe for a one of them. Hmm. We're recording last night. I feel like I know where she is. Oh, and that's stories. Let me set the time in the room. Oh yeah, we'll have an exit ticket. Probably a pretty simple one on on one of these first couple examples. Good question. Got to mention that. Hmm. Oh, a lot of definitions coming up. Inscribed angle that would start with the inscribed angle. All of them. You're all of them. Remember, I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell you over and over again. Don't worry about what the question is. Figure out what you know. We learned one thing right there. We have an inscribed angle. The arc is twice that. So plug that in. I guarantee you, there's one you should be able to figure out. And you can't solve what they're asking you to solve for, but you can show me you understand that. Yeah, and again, it's a little late to finally get to have it over here, but you've got to for you to do it, people. You've got to just get in that habit of, of doing what you know. That's how you do well on quizzes. You can't just leave stuff blank because you don't know how to go straight to the answer. Partial credit is what saved most people from do this one. All right, that's why I gave you the pen. You can take my pen. Got to be doing some stuff. So next page. Next page. So what is that? Yeah, because this and it's hard to see where that is out there. It's actually over there. And and again, that I will definitely make it more clearer. But I don't even know. In all honesty, I mean, just the four would just be slightly lower and slightly less. That, so that one gets a little tricky. I will tell you the forty degrees because it is a little. Oh, actually, I can just show you up here. This forty degrees again. The book didn't do a great job. Oh shoot. 
The 40 degrees is this angle up here. Uh, yeah, no, I was just kind of pointing out because I don't have it on the. Oh, actually, I do have it on the screen. Oh, I do. Uh, it's on the right screen. It's just on the. I got to scroll. So here, hold on. There. So this 40 degrees. Oh, actually. The 40 degree angle is this angle up top. Not not the one to the left. So again, I'm more concerned about you understanding the concept of what you do with the 40. But if you're filling in all of this, just correct that if you didn't know which angle it was, if you thought it was this angle over here. So the 40 degree angle will then lead you to what is the arc? It has this endpoints for that angle. And then you should be able to do the check problem again. If you can only get a piece of both of them, that's fine, but don't leave stuff blank. Forty degrees at that angle up there. That should tell you one, at least one thing right now. Okay, so we can see up and down there. Again, they're asking you for arc C F. So first thing you would need to identify is where is arc C F. And then I mean I again I would not have even try to solve for arc C F first. I would have just done what I, I know based on looking at the picture. Two pump. It's a temporary. I can get you working. Now, um, so there's not really an angle associated. There's no. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's. I guess that is the one angle. See, at first it looked like there was more stuff coming out of there, but I guess that is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead just for those of you that are stuck. There we go. Uh, I'll leave it there. You can look in your books if you can't see this well enough. So here's the process. Now that I've told you this is the angle right there that's 40 degrees. Again, if you're having trouble seeing, it's angle D up at the top. It's 40 degrees. What did we just learn? And it's an inscribed angle. Angle D, the point D is on the circle. What did we just learn about an arc? So the arc associated with that inscribed angle is the arc that has the end points at the end of that angle. So it's arc CF. It's the one that's associated with angle D. You just take the angle, you go all the way out in the, the circle, and that's the arc. So arc CD, or I'm sorry, CF. Ah, oh, using that's fine. So that's the arc down there. And what did we learn about the arc associated with an inscribed angle? What's the theorem. It's twice. The arc is twice the angle. Again, you've got to hammer that one thing home. If you don't get anything else out of this lesson, an inscribed angle and its associated arc have that relationship. The arc is twice the angle or the angle is half of the arc. So if that's 40 degrees, then this is what they're showing you here. You want to fill it in down there. I just take that 40 degrees, multiply it times two. And that's the measure of RxCF, 80 degrees. Again, not the math is not complex, but you got to understand that theorem. Remember, I mean, it's not really an understanding. You just have to remember that theorem. So now for the second.
So for the second part of that, we just do the opposite. They give us the measure of an arc. So the measure of the arc is 98 degrees. I just am going to take that arc now. I use the endpoints and I trace those endpoints and lines back down to the one single point that makes the angle. So again, here's the endpoint. I trace that line back that way. Here's the endpoint. I trace that line back that way. And it tells me that arc DE is associated with angle C. I just I just took the endpoints of the arc and traced it back down to the the, the angle, the vertex. Well, what do I know if I know the arc is true about the angle? It's an inscribed angle. It's half. Well, I just divide that in half. And they've, again, they've kind of done it for you down there. Oh, so that'd be 49. 49. Yes, no. So if you did not do the check, we give you another minute. Uh, if you want to be successful in this circles chapter, you got it. You got to put something pen to paper, pencil to paper. You can't sit there and just watch and think you're going to absorb shorts. Got to try. Even if you get it wrong, that's how you learn getting stuff wrong. You learn more getting stuff wrong than you do right. So, you know, like, then you have to think about it twice. You get it right, you only thought about it once. You get it wrong, then you got to think about it again to fix it. Got to make mistakes. Well, so I'm just telling you, this is not going to be a good quarter. And then the EOC, which is going to be pretty heavy on circles, is going to be rough. So I'll give you another minute and I'll quickly go over that one. That one's pretty straightforward. That one's easier than the other one. It doesn't have as many lines going through it. I don't know why they had, I guess DF was just to confuse you in the other problem. We're going to go over something about the dining room, which is also pretty important. Wow. Well, I'm going to go over quickly. If you haven't, it'll you know, be done by now if you're trying it. That is an arc. So I trace the, the lines back that form the angle back to their vertex. So that's my angle. Well, sure enough, that angle is an inscribed angle. So for an inscribed angle, we just did it twice. The angle is half of the arc. I've got to know that backwards and forwards. Don't get it confused. So if it is half that number, I just say 40 divided by two. Uh, I'm just gonna write it down here. Angle B is 20 degrees. And now we do the opposite. Now they gave us an angle. So I trace the angle all the way out and find the arc. What is that arc? Who am I going to call on? Jamarcus, what is that arc? So if I know the angle, I trace it back to the arc, two times the angle. All right, so next, um, we're going to start. I spent a lot more time on that just because that's the main concept you've got to have. 
Uh, try to do this one on your own. We did this here. Again, it just really comes down to the same thing we just went over. Angles are half the arc. But then there was a second theorem that is specifically what this picture is. I'll zoom in on this particular one. Oh, wait, shoot. No, uh, I'll freeze it. Well, you have it in books. All right, so hopefully this works. We'll see. Yes. I have no idea yet. We're about to do it. Um, let's see. So I'm going to try it as I tried to set my screen up so that when I zoom now, everything zooms in and out. But we'll see if that works. That's that's all I can zoom in. All right. Apparently that's all I can zoom in. So. These and again, the, the one of the big parts. If you're not real visual, these figures get a little. If you want to draw a bigger picture by hand, real quick, uh, let's do that. Just to show you that that can sometimes make things clear. I won't even use different colors. So if you take that image and just really quickly draw, if you draw, really good. Sir. So if you draw a bigger version, I have angle A. Looks kind of like that. Um, and then there's a B and a C. I have angle D way down here. So the key is that the angle D ends in these same points. Goes to C, goes to D. That's the key to the problem. So we're going over example two now. So if you draw it larger, it I think can be a little more helpful sometimes. I know that in angle A, what is that 5x subtract 12? Vanessa, what's that 5x subtract 12 tell me? What, what do you mean by A? What's A? What's that? What is that thing called? There's a reason why. A is a what? Look like that. So what? Angle, right? How do we know it's an angle without even knowing definition? What, what's the key that I'm trying to get to? Degree symbol. So again, it's either the angle of the arc. So it's got to be the angle of the arc. So you have to look at the arrow to figure out which one of those it is. If it was the arc, they wouldn't have the, the little arrow pointing inside the angle. They would just point to this. They probably still draw. They probably do something like that with the, um, the little arrow. They point to the arc instead of the angle. 
So I know angle A, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a little. So angle A is 5x subtract 12. I know that it also ends in BC, right? So what's true about BC? Again, I'm, I'm not even trying to solve it. I'm just thinking about what I know is true about BC. What's true about BC? B. An arc. Oh. The of the A, right? So let's just focus on A and we haven't moved into B yet. What is true about BC? If I know A is 5x subtract 12, what's true about arc BC? Oh, hello, girl. Where are you going? Just hang out. Oh, blanket. Over in the corner, right? Hang on. So what is true about arc BC? Who, who was I talking to? Ow. What's true about it? Yes, perfect. It doesn't mess. So here's the reason I'm doing it. So two things I've been going over in this. One, degree symbol. So the fact that it has a degree symbol, it's either got to be the angle or the arc. You just got to figure out which one. The next thing is, what is this? What is this? Uh, what is this thing? If it's got the degree symbol, what is it? Mm -hmm. It's the measure of the angle. Don't freak out when all of a sudden there's. I got this. I say I'll say this until you leave this class. And if I see you next year, I might say it first. Time. The measure is just whatever they're writing it. It doesn't matter if you can figure it out. That is the, the measure of that angle. We may not know what number it is yet, but it's some number, some unknown. Hopefully we can figure out what X is and then we can solve for it. But as of right now, that's the measure of that angle. So if that's an inscribed angle, because it's on the circle, we see this is the arc. then that arc is twice the angle. Again, doesn't matter what's in the, the problem. This is twice this, always, no exceptions. Again, you guys were great when there's just one number sitting there. Oh yeah, it's twice that number. But then as soon as something else is there, you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. It's still twice that number. We just don't know what that number is. Got better. All right, now let's go down to D. D I'm gonna do, we'll do in blue. Uh, I guess I'll draw an arrow in again. So I have 3x plus 2. What is that 3x plus 2, Kellen? It's the measure of that angle. Doesn't matter that it's got an x and plus 2. That's the measure of the angle. What is true about this angle? I go like that. What is true about that angle or specifically, more specifically, the arc? The case. It intersects. Yeah. Same arc, right? It's the exact same arc. So we know that twice this would be that, right? So we know that this arc, if we go backwards, half of this arc is this. Half of this arc is this. They intersect the same arc. We're going to get to the same point no matter what. And I know it gets confusing. I told you we were going to start getting tougher stuff. If you want to memorize that other theorem, that other theorem specifically says two angles, two inscribed angles that intersect the same arc have the same measure. So you just memorize that if you want. But I want, I'd really rather you understand, well, wait a minute. If this angle, if twice this angle is that, and twice this angle is that same number, they've got to be the same angle. The only way you can get the same number by doing two times both of these is if you start with the same one. It's got to be the same starting value in order for you to end up with the same number over here if you multiply times two. Again, your choice, if you want to memorize, if that concept is not making sense, you can memorize both of those. If the concept makes sense that to kind of get to this, these have to be the same because you're multi just multiplying them both by two. Only way you can get the same value at the end is if you start with the same number, if you're just going to be doing the same math too. So regardless, we now know those have to be the same. 
you guys kind of just jump to that anyway when you see two little mini equations that have an x in it. So to solve, we would set them equal to each other, which I'm assuming they kind of did. Just, so what is it? Subtract 12. So if that's the measure of A, we know the measure of A has to equal. So you can, like I said, if you can say it or write it in words, measure A, or the measure of angle A is the same as the measure of angle D. Well, that means the measure of angle A equals angle D. So you just take whatever the measure of angle is, the measure of whatever angle D is, and you set them equal in the equation. Try to write it in words first, then convert that to an equation. And obviously equals is an equal sign. The measure of the angle is just whatever's in the angle. Um, I would say that that's something you guys can typically do, but then you struggle to do the equation. Like you can say it in words, but then sometimes you struggle with the equation. So write it in words first. Uh, solving out, what do we do to solve out? Who did I not call that? Who likes out as well? Like Throw it out for us, Brian. I've got to get the X's on one side, which really means I need to get rid of them on one side. So I get rid of them on that side. So now they're gone. So that means whatever I do on one side, I got to do the other side. That's how I get all the X's on one side. And now it's just a two-step equation. Hopefully you can do two-step equations. Add 12. If you can't, then you need, I still, I left those algebra yeah, I excelled in there. Uh, and it's kind of, kind of we're late in the game, but if you need to practice that algebra so that you either pass your algebra requirement or if you want to do well in the EOC for geometry, there's still going to be algebra on that. Uh, so 2x is 14, so x is 7, and then divide by 2. So x is 7. What do we need to make sure we do, though? You answered it. So we're not typically done in geometry. Don't forget that, because I guarantee you on the EOC, they'll put that as a multiple choice answer. They'll put 7. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, there's 7. I got it right. But then the question will actually be normally, what is the measure of something? Which I'm not sure if that's a full point. What did it ask for in this since I'm, I lost my, did it ask for an angle or? Uh, measure of angle A, it looks like. So we would then have to say, okay, well, if I know X is seven, I know that's the measure of angle A. But now I know that X is 7, so 5 times 7, and then subtract 12, 35 subtract 12, looks like it's 23, we got 23 degrees. So what's the measure of angle D? Yeah, they're the same, or we just concluded that earlier, because they entered, if the arc was the same, then these are both half that same number, so they have to be equal to each other. That's probably, I should have explained it that way, probably. If I know they have the same arc, we're just dividing that number in two to get both of those. So again, you can think first directions to my pocket. Uh, so they both, if you really want to make sure, plug in seven down here. Seven times three is 21, plus two is also 23 degrees. So you should get the same, just to check your work. Uh, I'm not going to go over the example or the check problem. Um, hopefully, we'll have some time and come back and we can work on it, but we need to just make sure we get through the material first. All right, so let's lead off. Is anybody writing any of that down? All right, it's also recorded, remember. And it, I think they did all the work over here. Like, you just have to plug in. All right, let's get rid of all of that. I got to also shrink it back down a little bit. Eh, actually, no, I don't. Yeah, we'll just do this. We can scroll to the oh. <clears throat> screen really jumps all around when I try to zoom way in. Actually, it's not even doing anything. So let's try it another way. 
Um, what page are we on? So now we're on 217. Thank you. So moving to 217. Uh, again, just more examples. Oh, this is proof stuff. Um, definitely not going to have you write a proof. Oh, well, I can't do this. So let's just look at it really quickly. Um, if I know these two arcs are the same, what it like any get and I, then I know these two arcs are the same. Any guess is what that's going to lead to? Any, anybody, first of all, before I call it, anybody have any idea? Why would they tell me two arcs are the same? In a circle, like. Right? So again, if we know the arcs are the same, we know the angles would be half of that, because somehow there's probably going to be two angles associated with those arcs. So those two angles are going to be the same. That's that's where that's the. If you understand that concept, then you're in pretty good shape. So again, if I know these two arcs are the same, well, then that means these two angles that, and this is what I told you earlier, it doesn't really matter if they share the same arc or not. If the arc is the same measure, then the two angles are the same measure. That's kind of this problem right here. So these would have to be the same measure. And then again, there's actually not really arcs. Oh yeah, there is. So here, let's do a different color. So here's the arc in green, right? So I go from the end point and I just trace the line down. So that's the angle right there. So that angle there would have to be the same as. So here, let's do this one in red. So here's the other arc that has two little congruence marks. I would have to trace that down to there and trace that down to there. So that angle, and it gets confusing. Then, if you want to draw a bigger picture, I'm not going to worry about it since this is a proof problem, but the point is. Again, if the arcs are congruent, you're going to probably have two. Even if it was central angles, you'd still have two central angles that were congruent. So it really wouldn't even matter if it's inscribed or central angles. Uh, there's another thing we're going to do. I won't do it right now, but we'll we'll get into it in a second. So they the point of that proof was they proved congruent triangles. Um, we're not going to worry about that. All right. So wait, are we already done? No. We should be on two eighteen, right? It's two eighteen. Huh. I didn't go all the way down to. Not forget to. Nineteen. Somehow I got it out a little bit, but we'll get it out. Um. Oh boy, I'm not gonna ever do this again. Thought that would make it easier, but it does not. Just gets really jumpy. I think this is two eighteen. Is this two eighteen here? This stuff. Like all the pictures where they're drawing it. All right, so at least we're on the page. So now I'm going to just have to figure out how to show it. All right, so um, we don't do anything with constructions. Again, you will see, I guarantee you're going to see construction on the UFC. You saw it on the midterm, I'm pretty sure some people said. Um, a construction is just them physically creating like the concepts we're talking about. So if you see if you see something like this, just know you're just going to kind of have to try to figure it out using what you know about the concepts. So here's the next concept with that in mind. This will work. Yeah, that's close enough. So there's a new term again that goes along with inscribe. So they kind of go together. 
Inscribed is the angle. It's you know where the vertex is on the circle. So now we're talking about an entire quadrilateral being inscribed. Quadrilateral is what? Like quad, four-sided shape, right? Four-sided polygon, technically. So they're saying if we take a four-sided figure and draw it inside a circle, and again, it's called inscribed because all the vertices, all the corners are on the circle. So that's what inscribed means. Same thing for a quadrilateral as it is for an angle. It's telling us that the opposite angles are supplementary. But again, if you just want to memorize, you can memorize. You know a four-sided figure has all its points on the circle, then the opposite angles are supplementary. I'm going to try to explain. I mean, I'm going to explain to you why. It may or may not sink in. A little tricky. Uh, hold on. You can look in your book, or I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about angle L. I'm going to do it up here with highlighter. I don't know if you want to try to make a bunch of lines in your book or not. Angle L is associated with this arc, right? I take angle L and I go all the way out to its endpoints. The endpoints of angle L, I'll draw it in real quick, but then we get to it. So there's angle L. The endpoints are K and M. So if I draw in the arc, it's that highlighted in the yellow arc, right? Everybody sees that. Well, now let's talk about the angle on the opposite side. Because again, they're talking about the opposite angles in a, in a quadrilateral. Is what the um, theorem is saying. So the opposite angle is angle in, right? So angle in, I draw it out. In points are K and M, right? So that's the arc associated with angle in. What happened? What did I just create? Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm talking about the highlighted part. The highlighted part makes a circle, right? How many degrees in a circle? <laughs> in the whole circle, there's 360. But what do we know about the arc? I'm sorry, the angle relative to its in, like if it's an inscribed angle relative to its arc. It's half, right? So if I know the, the total of the arcs in those two angles, so again, the arc for angle N is green, the arc for angle L is yellow. If I know the total degrees in those two arcs is 360, I have two inscribed angles, which I know are half of the arcs. I just take half of 360. And that will always be the case if we use the other two. So let's say we said, well, wait a minute. Sure, it worked for those two angles, but that can't possibly work for every angle. All right, well, let's look at angle K, right? Angle K would end right there. So that angle, it would end on those two letters. That would be my arc. Well, the opposite angle M also is going to end on those two letters, right? It's going to end on the exact same two letters. So its arc would be from here to here. Makes a circle. The opposite angle, their arcs will always make the full circle. So if those angles are inscribed, they are half of that full circle. So that's why they always add up to one. You could draw that in yourself to figure it out if you forget the theorem. If you just want to memorize, you can memorize. But like I said, you can have a lot of you try to memorize in circles if you try to memorize every theorem by the time we get done with all this. So just it all goes back to the concept though. The arc is twice the angle, the inscribing. 
the inscribed angle is half the arc. You just have that down. You just know that backwards and forwards. And you can all figure out all of these, you know, pretty much all these things. All right. So with that in mind, I'm guessing we might have. Oh, actually, no, they go into the construction next, I guess. So let's find the next. Uh, I'm I'm not going to go into anything. All that is, is it, it's an inscribed triangle is what it is. Um, sure. Theorem associated with that. Yeah, there's no theorem. We're going to get to a theorem that has to do with that in a second. Let's go to 219. All right, so 219. Boy, God dang it, it's not 219, is it? Is that 219? Yes. All right, so try to do example four. This is where we'll probably talk about the big concept that um, if you stay on this side, that means it work. Try to do the check problem also, example four and the check. What? How do you not go to algebra two? Is that hurting your grade right there? Or you just think still do everything you want? Okay. No, it's just all the crap. It's just kind of um, yeah, that's the reason we're talking about. They, they did a bunch of training. They must really be pushing on us, which is funny because. They left, they've renewed our contract. I think this is like the last year of our contract. Company, 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 company. I don't know if they've already been doing it. They couldn't get it. They pushed this Alex thing, and then next year we're using different books on different tools. We'll speak. That tends to happen in any major moment. Really, really push something, and then two years later, like the books that we used it. Envision. Uh, I'll give you another minute or two, and then I'll do the example, and then you can try to wrap up the check problem. In So what are the able signs that the that I'm using for? So it's together they want to make it. Okay. Sure. But I want you to focus this week. What are the risks? What are the risks? I don't know. What are the risks? So, uh, Megan at the top. What, what did that mean? It's actually called that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an X. So let's try to talk about it also. Is that in this case, that's not the right equation. This is one of those situations where a bunch of people are just going to jump straight to that equation. 
are used to seeing that a lot. You got things that can think about what's going on. Very good. Try. I'm not sure. No, I've seen a lot of it on here. We need to go over this one. I'm not sure that we're doing it correctly. Well, let's talk about this one. So everybody kind of put pencils down. If you're working on it and you think you're making progress, a lot of you, I believe, are doing the wrong thing. So some of you are doing the correct thing. I saw two different things, and I'm pretty sure... Well, one of them has to be right, but I'm pretty sure the one that I'm, I've only seen once or twice is right. The ones that I keep seeing are the ones that are wrong. So you guys have a go-to. I don't know sometimes you read the problem, but you see two little mini equations with an X in it, a Y or whatever, and you set them equal to each other. A lot of times that works. But a lot of times the concept is that the arcs are the same or the angles are the same or whatever. Some of you did something where you kind of said, well, I'm, I'm going to do two times one of those and set those equal to each other. Challenge there is we're talking about two angles. That's an angle and that's an angle. We're talking about two angles, so we really don't need to multiply anything by two or divide by two. They're both angles, we're not talking about an angle and an arc. That's when you would need to multiply something by two. So in this case, I have a feeling all of that's wrong. But let's talk about what's actually happening. Again, there's a theorem that you can use if you memorize stuff, but I'm just going to go back to the original one. What is true about an inscribed angle and its arc? What are you call it? Right? The arc is twice the angle. So I'm that again, you really understand that one. You have to be able to connect some dots and some ideas. Well, I should not let you go over that thing. You have to be able to connect some dots and like Take that to the next level, but that's the only thing you need to know. If I know this angle right here, right? That, and again, I'm going to start with the angle that they give me. I know that angle right there intersects ML. The measure of that angle is 5x plus 4. So I'm just going to write some stuff down. Measure of angle K. 5x subtract 4. Now, I can write that the arc is twice that. I can write that ML is twice 5x subtract 4. Now, there's not really any markings there. I don't know that I'm going to use that, but I can write it up there. So now I can write, let's go over here. I'm going to kind of erase some stuff as I go. I know that's measure of angle M. So I'll write that down where I have angles. I know the measure of arc KL. So arc KL has to equal to, and a lot of you wound up using this as your equations. It has to be twice. Oh, I didn't even write what that is. So that's 8x subtract 10. So it's twice 8x subtract 10. Now here's what I got to figure out though. Are those angles equal? Do they share the same arc? Or is there is there are there arcs congruent? I have no congruent symbol, so it's not telling me any arcs are congruent, right? Right? It's not telling me any arcs are congruent. So I can't say this arc is congruent to this arc. And actually, visually, it doesn't look like you're congruent. So if the arcs are not congruent, the angles can't be congruent. So you can't set the angles equal. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, if I'm starting with a different number, I know I divide that number in half to get the angle. Well, if I'm starting with a different number and I'm dividing both those numbers in half, the angles can't be equal to each other. 10 divided by 2 is different than 8 divided by 2. Starting with a different number and then doing the same math to those numbers you can't get the same answer. So I'm not going to be setting these things equal. So now I got to think, well, is there a way I can set the angle equal to the arc? Well, individually, I don't have any information. 
about either arc, right? Like, I don't know anything about just this arc. I don't know anything about just this arc. Well, what do I know about the two arcs together? That's your key. So I know this arc plus this arc is 180 degrees. So now I can say, well, wait a minute. If I know that the arcs total 180 degrees, they are created by two inscribed angles, right? Angle M, I'll just make it a small angle so I don't get it too cluttered. Angle M creates that. Angle K creates that blue arc. So what's true about those two angles? If they're inscribed angles, what's true about them? Relative to the arcs. The angles are half the arcs, right? So again, I told you there's only one theorem you really need, but you got to know it inside and out, and you got to be able to expand on a little bit. This angle is half of this arc. This red angle is half of that arc. Well, I know the two arcs added together are 180. So if I added the angles together, because that's the measure of one angle. Actually, let's keep it color coded. Oh, wrong color. Those two angles added together would equal what? Ben. What would the angles added together be? This is the last tricky part. So the arcs we just said, we know the arcs added together are 180, right? Because it makes half circle. That's a diameter. It goes through the middle. That's 180. So the arcs, write it down if you need to in word. Arcs. I'll just write added together. In words, even, not even numbers. Arcs added together is 180 degrees. What do I know is true about the angles relative to arcs? Inscribed angles or what? Mm -hmm. Well, just in general, what was the theorem? Inscribed angles relative to their arc or what? Half, right? I know inscribed angles are half. So inscribed angles are one half the arc. So what has to be true about the two angles added together? Isaiah. They have to be half of the two arcs added together. Right? So if I know the arcs added together are this, I know the inscribed angles. Boy, that looks like the inscribed angles are half the arcs. So if I add the angles together, they have to be half of the arcs. So we don't, and actually there was no, I didn't see this correct equation at all. Now that I think about it. If I add those two angles together, they need to be 90 degrees. So that's your point. Again, I told you circles was going to get tough. So here's what you do. You do all of this stuff. You tell me what you know. And that can be the difference between you passing a quiz and not or, or getting to a C or a B, depending on how much you need. Because it's going to be tough to get everything right on these next few quizzes. But if you say, well, wait a minute, I'm just going to start with what I know. I know that is an inscribed angle. And again, write it out like this, write it out like this. I know, therefore, that. So which one was that? Um, I know angle K is equal to that. So I know arc in the middle is twice that. Like write all that stuff down. Worst case scenario, you can't get the answer, but you told me that what you know. You told me a bunch of stuff you know is true. Then hopefully you work your way into figuring out, well, wait a minute. Now I see that that's like half the circle. So that's got to be 180. Well, if I know that's 180, maybe you can make that connection that the angle of that together have to be half. Um, so really quickly, what's going to be true? And I think this is coming up. I'm just going to do it right now. Oh, shoot. Was anybody still waiting? Uh, hold that thought. This is kind of a big one here, so let's just get to it to make sure we cover it. We have a circle. And in that circle, I'll do my best to do it. We have a diameter. Big foot. Horrible. I'm a 
lower it a little bit. Not that it matters. All right, so I have a circle. I'm going to draw an inscribed angle into the circle with the endpoints of the diameter. I'm going to draw an angle. And not just yet. They're going to get to problems that are like this. I'm just covering it now since we're kind of on. What's true about that inscribed angle? What's what's true about the arc? Let's say what's true about the arc with the inscribed angle. Hmm? Well, which okay, let's do this. Let me put letters in it. Where is the arc for that inscribed? So again, the angle's down there. Where is the arc? It's the top part of the circle. It's half the circle, right? If the diameter is the endpoint, then the arc is half the circle. It'll always be half the circle if the diameter is my endpoint. Like I don't, no matter how you draw in the diameter, the diameter makes up half the circle. So the endpoints are always gonna make up, or the arc is always gonna make up 180 degrees. Well, if I draw an inscribed angle in, and those are my endpoints, no matter how I draw it, what's the measure of the angle going to be? I am right, because this is inscribed, not central. So it doesn't matter how I draw in an inscribed angle if my endpoints are the, the diameter. I'm always going to create a 90 degree angle. Uh, this will be really thick red, but that's nice. So if I do that, that's way, way bigger than I thought it was going to be. So let's at least change that one. So if I do that again, what? Huh, you don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, there we go. Now I'll say the that was weird. So if I create that angle, I use the endpoints. So my arc is still 180. Therefore, that angle is 90. So I'm creating a bunch of 90 degree angles every time I use the end point of the diameter. Doesn't matter, I could draw it in way down here. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's do this. So I could draw it in right there, all the way over there again. My end points are the diameter, means my arc is 180, which means the measure of the inscribed angle is 90. Every time you see that, I guarantee you that's gonna be on the EOC. They're going to have a diameter. They're going to have an angle in there. They're not going to tell you it's 90. You're going to have to know. They're not going to put a symbol in there. Nothing. You're going to have to understand that's a 90 degree angle. And that may not, like, you may then have to do other stuff with it, but that's going to be your beginning step. If you don't know that, you won't be able to go in. The end points of the diameter, then the inscribed angle has to be 90 degrees because the arc is 180. And it still goes back to the original theorem we learned. Half of the arc is the dense part uh, All right. So I have a feeling that's coming up. So you'll be doing a. What? Oh, I'm, I think I'm just not. Interested. There we go. Uh, so what we left off on that. Um, 219, go ahead and try to do example five. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll try to get us set up to do, assuming this is the, that 90 degree thing maybe. All right. Oh, hey, um, just to make sure you saw it, did you see the tail?
Um, you should really be able to do the rest of them. So I'm just going to say, go ahead and start working on the rest of the examples. I'll assign some problems also from the practice. I can figure out how to do that. Oh, there we go. Uh, so that's page 221. Page 221. You do not have to do proofs. So 221, 1 through 10. So again, just keep working on the rest of the examples. And I'm going to put the practice. Back to blue. Another color. So, page, so I'll write this up there in a minute. Let me write it up here first. One. And not put the other problems in. Oh, no. That's all of page All right, so that's your assignment in this chapter. Uh, you're responsible for all the examples. And then those are the practice problems. So our exit ticket on Thursday. One through six. Will come from something like one through six. So exit ticket one through six. Put a star next to that over here.
Right. And hopefully we'll have some time Thursday to practice a little more also before it. But I don't think they're super complex. I mean, you're just doubling a number or dividing by two. All of those should be an easy exit. It'll just be one point and we'll get two point exit tickets. Which you need these things. I'll get to the tenants. Um, really quickly for the recording, if you don't have your book with you for some reason, that's at least the first 10 problems right there. So you can work on those. I don't have. Mm. Let's see. I don't think I have the other ones. I have the other ones in here. It's kind of all messed up. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. There they are. These are the other ones here. I have to go back and fix all of this. But these are the other problems 13 through 31. First, you can see it. In case you don't have your books, as you're watching this, 13 all the way through 31. There you go. Page 222 for those. 